sometimes as a fan, you know, you don't really, you see a guy get hit, you don't really know why he got hit. But sometimes there's some history to it. And let me give you an example. <clears throat> we're playing, we're playing, okay, I'm with the Phillies, and we're playing, I, my last cup, I left the Braves after about 12, 13 years with the Braves, and I went to the Phillies. And we went back to Atlanta, and we're playing the Phillies. And a guy for the Braves is stealing bases. You know that unwritten rule we talked about when the team's up, you stop stealing all that stuff. Well, a guy named Otis Nixon is stealing a lot of bases. And, and our manager for the Phillies, Jim Fergosi, gets really mad. He goes, okay, next time Otis Nixon comes up, we're hitting him. So everybody's like, okay, whatever. And so kid comes out of the bullpen named Wally Ritchie, young left-hander and he throws the ball at Otis Nixon because we're mad at Otis Nixon. Otis Nixon comes out to the mound and he jumps up and he karate kicks him. And he he tears uh, tears a hole in his jersey with his spikes and, and cuts him with his spike. And the you know, the whole well, we had a big fight and everything. So uh, so a week later a week later the Braves come up to Philly. And Wally's in the bullpen. He's a bullpen pitcher. And some of the guys in the, in the bullpen, the relievers, say, okay, Wally, if our starting pitchers don't hit Otis Nixon because of what he did to you, we're going we're gonna to hit him. So we go through the first hitter's Otis Nixon. He doesn't get hit. Next time up, he doesn't get hit. Next time up, he doesn't get hit. His fourth time up in the eighth inning, one of the relievers comes out of the bullpen, and Roger McDowell, and he throws and he hits Otis Nixon right in the back. And, the, you know, everybody comes out and starts fighting and everything. And nobody knows what's going on. And so I'm running off the field. Remember, I was with the Braves the year before. And I'm running off the field and the shortstop's yelling at me because sometimes they get the next hitter up and shortstop's going, Murph, we're going to get you. You're, you're the next hitter. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, whatever. And it was Bobby Cox, and I thought, there's no way they're going to throw at me. I was just there 13 years. <laughs> so I come up to the plate, and in the Braves dugout, uh, Tom Glavin, Tom Glavin, Bobby Cox said, okay, they hit Otis. We're hitting the first player up next inning. And Tom Glavin goes up to Bobby Cox. He goes, Bobby, it's Murph. <laughs> he goes, I don't care who it is. We're hitting it. <laughs> so, so I get up there. I'm, I'm at the plate, and... And Tom Glavin's on the mound, and he doesn't even look at the catcher. He just goes into his <laughs> one. He's just, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? So he throws it. He misses me. Same thing. Next pitch, he doesn't even look. He goes up throws it, and throws another one at me, threw three, three at me. He missed me. And that's because I was like, like this. I was standing back. Uh, so the next, uh, the next, that winner, the pitching coach with the Braves is talking to John Cruck of the first base. So this is the off season. He says, Cruck, remember when, when McDowell hit Otis Nixon and Philly says, we're going to get McDowell next year. Watch. So we go through the 92 season. Nothing happens. Roger McDowell gets traded to the Dodgers. And in September of that next year, the Braves were playing the Dodgers. And Roger McDowell got up against the, the Dodgers, and sure enough, boom, he hits him right in the back. And Roger was like, oh, yeah, now I remember how that happened. So it's just one of those things that, to illustrate that sometimes it takes a year or two for guys to get even with each other, but they do, they do get even.